Hello and welcome everybody to this episode of the Unreal Engine C++ training series where today we'll be talking about interfaces. What are interfaces? Interfaces are a way for us to interact with many classes all at the same time. The Where you'd see these uh, most often, um, at least I think, um, are turn-based RPGs. I think turn-based RPGs are the most obvious types of games that benefit from interfaces. All characters, including enemies, the player character, and other NPCs, all have basic things that they can do. They can attack, they've got defense, they can, they can perform magic, and they all have basic stats, right? They've got their level, their health points, their strength, and whatever else. <clears throat> Excuse me. And for demonstration purposes, we'll be creating a bare bones enemy interface in a turn based RPG type fashion. Now, it's a good thing that the Unreal Engine has some of this functionality already kind of built in. So, I can come in and we're going to create a new C class. And if we scroll all the way down to the bottom, we see that there's this Unreal interface. A U object interface class to be implemented by other U object based classes. And I'm going to actually name this Enemy Interface. Create the class. So, what we're going to be doing with this interface is we're going to be able to make some functions and some variables that we can then pass off to other classes that derive from this interface. In this way we'll only need to write the function one time but we've basically got unlimited unlimited use for it. Alright so now that we have it open uh, we can see that we have two classes that have been created for us. This first class at the top, the U interface, this is actually what's going to be connecting our interface to the engine's reflection system, which allows for blueprint integration as well as garbage collection and other stuff like that if needed. We're not going to touch this at all. It's already been set up for us and it works perfectly fine. The second class down here, however, is where all of our functionality is going to go. So this is where we're going to get our functions, our variables, our struts, whatever we need is going to go inside of this class, just like if we were doing anything else. So I'm just going to create some variables. I'm going to get an int, and I'm going to call it level. This is going to store what level it is, or what level our enemy is. And then here, strength is going to be the attack level, if that's what you want to do and void we're gonna just write one function right here just for demonstration purposes and it's going to be an attack function and now in if we were actually making a full game this this attack function would be you know quite in depth but we're just showing off how these interfaces are gonna work so we're not gonna do too much with this I'm gonna right click on attack and create a definition So it creates a nice function definition for us. We want to make sure 100% that this interface right here, or I'm sorry, that this class right here is the I interface class. As you can see, we have the I interface class and we have the U interface class. All of the stuff that we're going to be doing is going to be coming from the I interface class. Just to, just to make sure. And for this, what we're going to do is we're going to just print out a message just because that's all we need to do to, to demonstrate that how this works. So log temp, warning, fairly standard stuff, text, and we're going to say a level blank enemy attacks and deals percent D some sort of damage. What we're going to be doing is we're going to replace 
this with level and strength. Right? So when the enemy attacks, it'll say a level four enemy attacks and deals 13 damage, for example, just numbers that, that came to mind, right? So save and compile, everything's saved, everything's compiling. Now what you'll notice when we go ahead and we actually start to use the interface is that the engine uh, or IntelliSense inside of Visual Studio is actually probably gonna break a little bit for us. It's not going to work as well as we'd like it to. We've got a nice completed compile. It's not gonna work as well as we want it to. So you're, you're either gonna have uh, a few options. You're, you're either going to one, uh, look for an alternative for IntelliSense, or two, you'll just have to turn it off. Or maybe you, or maybe you just deal with the uh, with the error messages that it gives you. All right, so now that's compiled and everything. Uh, I'm going to create another class. This time it's going to be a character class, or I'm sorry, an actor class. And this actor is going to be. Oh, wrong button. It's going to be enemy one. And this enemy is going to inherit from the enemy interface that we have. And just a quick moment to talk about the word interface here. Um, generally in C++ terms, in pure C++ terms, an interface is made up of nothing but pure virtual functions. So it's basically an abstract class. As you can see here, we have um, we do have a function definition here that would not generally belong in a classic interface. However, Unreal Engine, they use the term a bit differently so that we can add in some functionality inside of the interface instead of just having it as an abstract class. All right, now that we've got this enemy opened up, enemy one, we can come in and say, we're going to include we're going to include the enemy interface dot h and then what we're going to do is here in the u class we've got class tutorial api enemy one and it's inheriting from public a actor what we're going to want to do is we're also going to inherit from public the i enemy interface so now it's also going to be inheriting functions from our enemy interface like uh, that we have uh, set up right here now you can see that we've got error messages like I said we've got error messages IntelliSense does not like the fact that we have added engine functionality I'm guessing is what it is all right, now that that's all set up in the header file, we can test it out by seeing if we can access the variable for our, our, our enemy's level. So for this, we'll just say level. And of course, our IntelliSense isn't working. So I'm going to set a level. This enemy is going to be level six or seven. How about that? And we'll give it a strength of I don't know 24 that's good enough now I'm gonna compile and if this compiles properly then hopefully what we'll see is that um, the engine or IntelliSense will catch up and if it doesn't then I might have to build inside of Visual Studio itself let's check let's check it out so compile complete still giving us errors so we did com we did successfully compile this code so it does work I think in order for it to show up in IntelliSense I have to build from Visual Studio though nope okay it's just going to go away with time hopefully hopefully you know, IntelliSense will keep up Visual Studio will catch up with us but in the meantime we know that the code works so now that we know that these uh, these variables work we let's 
try testing out to see if we can attack. Let's see if we can attack the player. So I'm going to write attack. Just, I'm just going to call that function, right? Call our function from our iEnemy interface. I'm going to save and compile. And hopefully what, I can, what I'm going to be able to do is bring our enemy into our level and we should see the output log display something for us. So compile complete. I'm going to create a blueprint class, or create a blueprint based off of this um, enemy. And I'm just going to name it BP Enemy One. Create the blueprint class, and I'm going to save it. I'm not going to give it a static mesh or anything. I really don't care at the moment. I'm just going to drag this into the level. Anywhere in the level, it doesn't matter. We're just going to test out to see if if the output log will display what we want it to. I don't know why I hit compile again. I don't need to recompile anything. Oh well, compile complete. Only took five seconds. And what should happen is we should be able to click play and our enemy will call attack from our enemy interface and throw in its own variable values for our level in strength. So what we should expect to see when we hit play is a message in yellow, hence warning, saying a level seven enemy attacks and deals 24 damage. Sounds simple enough. Hopefully it'll work. And I hit play. And yes, we do have that at the bottom where it says log temp warning a level 7 enemy attacks and deals 24 damage now this can be like I said before almost infinitely expanded because basically all we did is we wrote a function one time in our interface and all we need to do is change up the values per enemy and we can have attack functionality for all our enemies without having to write everything from scratch so to demonstrate that I'm going to create another enemy actor enemy 2 and we're just gonna repeat what we just did without having to rewrite our attack function over and over and over again and if this isn't an actual game of course like I said earlier our, our attack function isn't going to be one line it's not going to be a debug print line like we have here it'll be much much more in depth than that so include our enemy interface we're going to inherit from our I enemy interface public I'm going to set some variable values. Enemy2.cpp is what I want. Come into the source. There we go. Level. This one's going to be a weaker guy. He's going to be level equals 2. And his strength is going to be 4. I don't know. And begin play. Attack. Okay, yep, you can see when I come back to enemy one, um, intelligence has fixed itself, it looks like. It's not giving us wild error messages for no reason, like it's still doing here. So I guess it just does take a while for it to adjust to the engine, whether it has to look for certain files or something like that in order for us to uh, not be getting error messages. It's annoying, but it's something that you deal with if you're going to, if you're going to use IntelliSense. Compile complete. I'm gonna make a blueprint. BP enemy two. Save that and throw that in the level as well. 
and now we should be getting two out log me uh, output log messages, one from a level seven enemy and one from a level three enemy. All right, I'll save and hit play. A level seven enemy attacks and deals 24 damage and a level two enemy attacks and deals four damage. So, hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, stay tuned, make sure you hit subscribe. I have tutorials that go up every Monday and Friday. Um, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, you can ask in the comment section down below, or you can tweet at me at not from Egypt. Oh, I can't spell Egypt. Well, that'll be it for me today. I hope you all. I hope you all have a good one, and I'll see you in the next one.